Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Arcform Catalyst. Very cool. I love how that looks. Uh, thank you to the gentleman who sent this in. It looks like he wishes to remain anonymous, so I'm going to respect that. Uh, and thank you so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I will link this if I can. As far as I can tell, it comes in and out of stock. Uh, so if you want to check this knife out, at least the original listings with the price, you can find it right down in the description. Let's go ahead and get a measurement here. By the way, Arcform Catalyst, these are the same folks who brought you the Arcform Slimfoot. Uh, the manual version, uh, the manual production version, I believe there's a custom version, and then the also ProTech, I believe, did a collaboration, did an auto Slimfoot. So, same folks. Uh, let's go ahead, get the measurement here. Overall length of the Catalyst coming in at about eight and a quarter. Uh, blade length is about three and a half, and the cutting edge is also about three and a half because of the curvature there. That's a nice, this is my size of knife. I like this a lot. By the way, I'm sure you guys are like, wow, that is a beautiful edge. Does that come like that? <laughs> no, he put his own edge on it. I noticed that too, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Um, no, he put his own edge on it. So unfortunately, the stock edge will not be mirror polished. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see here, it's definitely a full-size knife with a lot of presence, large knife. Uh, not quite as long as the Rat 1, definitely bigger than the Rat 2, and I would still say larger than both overall. How about, uh, I mean, in terms of total mass, how about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? You can see here, pretty much the same thing, about the exact same overall length as the PM2, definitely larger than the Para 3. Last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the uh, uh, Bug Out. <laughs> I don't know why I forgot the name. So, definitely bigger than both. Let's go ahead and measure uh, thickness and carry profile. So, up against the Spyderco Para 3, yeah. Um, this is uh, a pretty pretty heavy duty boy here. You can see that we have this piece of titanium laying on top of the frame, which makes this part pretty thick. I mean, if it was without that, then no, you know, you'd be looking at about the same as the pair of three, but yeah, it's pretty much continued all the way throughout the body. So this is a pretty thick knife. Not insanely thick, but it's thick. Up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3 for length and height, you can see it's a little bit shorter than the PM2, but that's expected because the PM2 is very handle heavy. Including the flipper tab, I think we are almost, yeah, almost exactly the same height as the PM2. So this is tall this way. Keep that in mind. If you carry other things in your knife pocket with your knife, probably not going to be an enjoyable experience. If you only carry your knife in your knife pocket, then okay, right? It doesn't matter. Obviously not something you're going to want to carry in athletic shorts, right? Or thin pant material. But outside of that, you'll probably be okay. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. There they are. Gosh, I need to put like a, I don't know, like some neon tape on these things. Uh, gosh darn it, zero out, there we go. Okay, so the thickness, uh, blade stock thickness, it says 152, it's probably 150 thousandths. We are looking at titanium, carbon fiber, and S35VN for the blade material. Let's go ahead and weigh it. I don't think we have any milling on that. No, we, I'm sorry, we do. I just assumed because it felt heavy. Uh, we see in there, yeah, there you go. There's some milling in there, and that's probably good. Wait, I'm gonna guess this thing weighs six ounces. Okay, a little less, 5.33 ounces. That's gonna be too heavy for some people. Uh, ratios, right, if you're beginner ratios, not gonna tickle your fancy. Uh, for me, I don't care, 5.33 ounce object, uh, eight and a quarter inches overall, three and a half inch blade. Yeah, that's right, right smack dab in the middle of what I enjoy carrying, right? So. Do with that information what you will. Let's go ahead and get uh, my tools out for a hardware check. Uh, my, as per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very, very recommendable. You can find them right down in the uh, description of this video in the section that talks about my tools. Take a look at that. That is a carbon fiber pivot collar, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna be careful here. Uh, believe that's a T8, yeah, T8. And then also these screws holding on the carbon fiber scale down here are T8. I'm gonna guess that there are two more screws underneath here. Uh, in fact, 
Let's go ahead and just check. Because I always say that, and then I'm like, they're probably T6. And you know what? They probably are. But let's go ahead and check, because these should not be difficult to take out, and I should be able to do it without risking messing anything up. Um, you're going to have a few extra parts here. Um, make sure that you have a large flat surface, ideally somewhere to put. Yeah, we've got two more screws under here, and they're going to be T6 holding in the backspace, so that's just what I thought. Uh, not that big of a deal. That's just going to be the, oh, good, the air's going to turn off so that I can actually hear myself talk. Um, but uh, not that big of a deal. That's pretty much like what you can expect with designs like these that have these uh, scales with screws that are held on, um, you know, in the middle versus over here, which is probably better. But maybe they did that to make sure that the blade scale, or I'm sorry, that the knife scale stayed all the way down on all the edges rather than being held down on one side. And maybe the lip of the scale being, you know, up on the other side, I'm not really sure. Let's make sure. Never, by the way, when you are tightening screws, you never, n ever, ever, ever want to over tighten them. You basically just want them snug. Everything came back together just fine. So that's great. Anyways, um, yeah, so a few extra pieces of hardware. No big deal. Make sure you have a place to keep them, uh, either a um, container or I like to use a magnet, angle square. You can get that down there in the description as well. Just fine. Okay. I think we've done everything there. Let's go ahead and move forward. So first off, uh, I don't know about you guys, but to me, this is a very attractive looking knife. I actually like how they do this here where they, it's like an additional piece of titanium and then it's separated. There's a gap right here. Uh, well, it's going to be a gunk trap. Oh, it's going to be gunk in there and clean it out. <laughs> so what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. But I like how it looks, right? Um, this looks nice to me. All these pieces are contoured, right? And then uh, they're also shadow boxed by the frame underneath, which looks good. It gives it some busyness. In like, because the alternative is the same thing that we always see. Carbon fiber, is it seam, small seam, and then the scale and nothing else, right? We've seen that look a million times. It's a good look, right? But this uh, dresses it up just a little bit. And I think it's nice, right? I also love the touch with the uh, carbon fiber pivot collar. That looks really, really cool. By the way, the carbon fiber is good. This contour, this is nice carbon fiber. It's not, doesn't look junky or anything like that. The action is fantastic. And that that is, this blade is unbelievably smooth. It is completely and totally fall shut and not the, you know, cheap junky knife that's just like, it's loose and it's falling shut because it's just like the bearings are barely contacting the surface, right? No, this is the good kind of quality fall shut where truthfully, if this were a thousand dollar knife, it would be completely and totally, I'd go, wow, yeah, that's about the action that I expect on a thousand dollar knife. Nowhere near a thousand dollar knife. But yeah, this is Legitimately, this is great action. And uh, it's close, but there's no double clutch. The flipping action is good. The detent is, it's not light. I'm gonna say the detent is maybe medium to medium light. So the nice thing is, is that it's so smooth, right? It does not take much to get that blade to come out, but it is so smooth and there's so much mass to that blade. I don't think you can fail it. Let me put, let me go as light as I can, right? I'm holding this perfectly flat. Here we go, ready? Okay, let me try again. Ah, there we go. I can. If I really, really try, I can get it to. But I think maybe this needed an ever so slightly heavier detent. Truthfully, it's not likely. You're, you'd have to try. Even there, I couldn't. Hold on. Yeah, you have to really try to get it to fail because it's very, very smooth. Most of, most of the time, you're going to do this, and it's going to flip out super hard, right? I just noticed the detent was... Yeah, a little bit, a little teeny tiny bit, maybe too light. And your experience may vary. You may get one of these and the detent is slightly heavier and it just works, right? This is a stupid thing to get hung up on, truthfully. Don't like not go after this knife because you think the detent's going to be too light. It's not. It's, I'm just pointing out that it was surprising that it was as light as it was, but I still wouldn't call it a light detent. I would call it a medium to medium light detent, which works better or worse for any individual model. Uh, disengagement of the uh, frame lock is great. It's, you can see it's slightly raised so that you can approach it from the side, turn it and let it fall. The flipper tab is not a gigantic flipper tab. It's really just the total width of everything here, but the flipper tab itself is not gigantic. It's nicely knocked down, nice jimping up here so you can push button it if you want to, or you can 
light switch it, which is probably the best way to go, but it's up to you, obviously. You flip it however you want. The blade is definitely the coolest part of this knife. It just looks nice. I also like the Arc Form logo. Everything looks clean and futuristic, but like not in an obnoxious way where there's like, you know, like panels on things, you know, like an old uh, science fiction, um, uh, uh, what is his name? <laughs> Rocky. Uh, who plays Rocky? Why am I brain farting out? He's Rambo, right? Uh, so, uh, I, my brain is going Steven Seagal, but that's not right. I, so many people are unsubscribing from me right now. Because Sylvester Stallone, for the love of God, I'm so sorry. You know, an 80s uh, science fiction or early 90s science fiction Sylvester Stallone movie where there's just like unnecessary panels on everything, right? A lot of knives take that route for the science fiction look or the futuristic look. Uh, this is kind of a, a cleaner, you know, it just looks better. So we have a, a satin finished flat. I'm going to guess those are hand rubbed. Um, that's just a guess. And then two-tone with a, t a nice tumbled finish. That flat carries out about 85%, maybe 80% the length of the blade, carrying a lot of strength. Because of where they place this, this is a strong blade. It's also tall, so there's still plenty of room for it to drop down to a reasonably thin cutting edge. Now, he's got his own edge on here. Um, it's not like thin, thin. It's just thinner than what you'd expect for a blade that's this tall with a flat running down the middle. The tip is going to be plenty strong. It doesn't look like it. it's like all that much material. But if you think about how much material is actually down here, yeah, that tip is going to be plenty strong for, you know, how well it's going to puncture. So it will slice. It's not going to slice like an open L. It's uh, reasonably, you know, in fact, using the word thin is wrong. We should call that medium thickness behind the edge. Uh, better than you'd expect for something like this. Um, but yeah, medium. Uh, but I do love the blade. It's awesome. And up here, the edges are all nicely knocked down. There's nothing sharp up here as it should be. The only sharp part of the blade should be the edge. Everything is just beautiful. Uh, there's no no issue with the blade whatsoever. Nice sharpening choil. Uh, you're uh, close enough to the edge. Everything's out of the cutting path, so you're good to go. Ergonomically, it's pretty comfortable. Um, the pocket clip is pretty long. That's the only reason you can feel it. It's otherwise flat slightly contoured and the edges are all knocked down. It's also a uh, 3D machine titanium pocket clip. So that just always looks better. There is, this this knife has pretty good ratios between the blade and the handle. It's not a perfect one-to-one, -one, but uh, the reason I'm telling you that is because you are, you can get a full finger grip, but there's just enough room to do it. You can see there, that's, you know, there's pretty much one way to hold this knife and it's pretty comfortable. There's nothing like, oh my gosh, hand melting here, right? The pocket clip probably could have been a little bit shorter. It's not necessarily a hot spot. You're just feeling it because it's so long, but everything is pretty good, right? Uh, everything on this knife is nicely rounded down except for this corner right here and it's not bad it's just the sharpest part of the knife but then again when am i really gonna you know unless i'm like oh i need to hammer this blade into something using my palm which is stupid um so yeah i guess you don't really need to worry about that there's a lanyard hole for lanyardy people um so there you go there's a backspacer it looks nice simple flush titanium backspacer uh, and the pocket clip you can see is being prioritized over the lantern hole, which is fine. There's a decent amount of the knife sticking up out of your pocket because of the way that this is mounted, but it looks so good, honestly, that I really just, I don't know I, that I want to complain about it. You can see there that they have, well, I don't know if you guys will get the flashlight out. It does say arc form, uh, back in there. That's kind of neat, right? Uh, they... Instead of writing it like arc form on the blade, I hate I hate it when companies are just like, this is our name. Like they have to put it on there. You know, it's like no, the logo and the thing, the designer logo is fine, right? That's all you need. They put arc form inside there. So if you want to peek at it, you can. But you're not being screened. It's being whispered at you like arc form. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good place to put it. I I like that. Uh, milling on the inside. You guys saw that earlier. Um, pocket clip, it's all right. I do like that it um, at least it seems to go with the, the whole flow of the knife, right? It's kind of a weird shape by itself, uh, like a, I don't know, like a dolphin laying on its side. Um, but uh, yeah, with the knife, it looks good. There is a, and by the way, in and out of the pocket is going to be uh, a breeze because there's a continuous ramp at the edge of the pocket clip and it is riding on a smooth contoured surface. So 
you can do that one-handed. You'll be just fine. Uh, you also get that cool uh, carbon fiber um, uh, pivot collar on the non-show side of the knife. Uh, there is a steel lock bar insert doubling as the over travel stop, so that's nice. Uh, the knife is locking up at, mm, I don't know, 30% or so. There is no blade play up, down, left, or right. This is completely and totally solid. Uh, there's a stop pin back here, a little bit of shouldering, um, and the knife obviously runs on bearings, so that's good. Uh, no lock stick whatsoever. The knife is, yeah, it's almost per, I think it's probably because I've been screwing around with it. Let's give it a quick turn of the, if it's, if the blade is off center on this side, you need to turn this side of the pivot to get it to come back this way. If it's favoring this side, then you need to turn this side. Or if you don't have this side, then you need to remove all the, you, you need to back out the body screws and the pivot, and then you need to do the paper trick. But usually, you can just give it a little bit of a turn a ski here on the pivot, and you can get that blade to come back. Is it coming back? Oh, a little bit. Let's see if we can give her another turn here. Okay, I don't want it. The thing is, is you don't want it to go too far. Uh, it's pretty good now. I think that's the case. Is it still smooth? Oh yeah, yeah, it's still great. Okay, so that's all it needed, that's fine. That's gonna happen. You Loctite your pivot, use the blue 242 Loctite. You can find it down um, in the uh, description that talks about my tools and the stuff I use on this channel, it's pretty cheap. Um, anyways, let's check for pivot lash. No, no pivot lash at all. So this is extremely well made. What are these? What are they run? Well, uh, there are carbon fiber versions of this. There's micarta versions of it. And those come in at about $270, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then there are also some brass and copper ones, I think, that are a little bit more expensive. If you really like brass and copper, that's fine. And if you can find them, then great. Those materials make everything heavier, and it'll throw the balance off. And the balance on this knife as it is, is actually in a pretty good spot. Uh, we are right, it's balanced exactly where you're gonna put your index finger, which is, that's where it should be, that or directly under the pivot. Um, $270 I think is pretty good. I really wish that this was M390. In fact, I was kind of shocked to see that it was S35VN. There's a lot going on here that's really beautiful and there's a lot of refinement and just cool, like it's got a cool look to it. Um, and like they, they made it look like something called an arc form. <laughs> like imagine you had never seen this, right? And someone says arc form catalyst and it's a knife. They did a good job of making this look like something that was called the arc form catalyst, right? It's cool. I don't know what that could possibly mean. A catalyst for an arc form? I don't know. It's cool though, and it looks good. I really like how this knife looks, how it feels. It feels bulky enough to give you that sort of like, yeah, I got a big, you know, capable, well-made, solid object in my hand, but not so much that it makes me not want to carry it. I love how the blade looks, and I love how robust it feels. I mean, it really does look and feel durable, and I truly believe that it is. The benefit to having S35VN on something like this is that it's really going to accentuate the excess toughness of that blade. So if you're going to abuse it, S35VN is going to be a better steel for abuse than M390, because M390 is going to be much more likely to chip or, you know, the tip uh, break, the tip's going to break off or something like that. However... I don't condone abusing your knife like that. I think it's better that you have the qualities of M390 on something like this. You've got plenty of excess robustness in the geometry, right? So you've got all the toughness you would need anyway. It's better to have the um, the qualities of M390 like the excess edge retention and corrosion resistance. Um, the downside to M390 is, of course, that it's not going to be nearly as easy to sharpen as S35VN. S35VN is fine. The problem is, is that now people expect to see it on knives that cost under $150. So it's less, right, it's less acceptable. This knife, at the time of this recording, was sold out on Blade HQ. So I don't know how long this knife has been around. If they do uh, future runs of this, I really think that the blade steel should be M390 at $270. Uh, as I usually say, um, I, I would much prefer, you know, a lot of people, are, it should be cheaper. Yeah, but what I don't want them to, what I don't want to happen is the same thing, just make it cheap. No, just charge us the same amount uh, because that the quality is all there. Like we're in the right territory for quality and then just put M390 on it. 
Um, that being said, I think most people will still be plenty satisfied with this knife. Um, S35EN is still a super steel. It's still a great steel, right? It's, you know, it's like if this were S45EN, people go, oh yeah, that's fine. And then, but S45EN is incrementally better. <laughs> it's not even, not something that's ever going to register during use than S35EN. It's just the newest, spiciest thing, right? So... I think anybody who manages to find this, if they bring it back in, let's say they bring it back, it's 270 bucks for S35 Yen. The other qualities of this knife are so good. And S35 Yen is still an acceptable steal, right? At, at this price point. It's just like, eh, I wish it was something different, but it's still all right. I think people are gonna be happy with this. I like this knife a lot. I think this is really cool. And it just kinda, you know, checks a lot of little boxes for me. And it, I don't know, it's just, it's a nice knife. It's got some, it's got some flavor. It's got some, uh, you know, some aesthetics that are a little bit more fancy, you know, for people looking, you know, to enjoy something like that. But at the same time, the look is very, not minimalist, but it's simplistic enough that it, it looks, you know, it looks serious. It, it doesn't look like it, it's taking itself too seriously, but it's it's a nice, you know, it, it's a nice knife that will double as a, a very durable and dependable cutting tool. So, yeah. Uh, that's honestly what I think about it. If you can find one of these, yeah, go ahead. I don't think, uh, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with the overall quality. So I'll go ahead and put this on my recommended knives playlist. This was a joy to handle. Absolutely. So thank you very much for the gentle, uh, to the gentleman who sent this in for review. Uh, I think that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.